I'd like for all the SAC club members who are present here, official SAC members, please stand. Okay, so these are the official SAC members who have brought you to NU West. Give them a hand. Um, it takes a lot of volunteering to do this, and I uh, wanted to thank especially uh, Brian and Sue Ann Carpignano for doing the food. Yeah. Yeah. There's a tremendous amount of work. Uh, the food is from Tahoe Joe's this year, and uh, I really think it came off pretty well. Um, so, um, so we'll go ahead and start to cut that cake. But I'd also like to honor our sponsors, which also uh, make Andy West possible every year. So as I, as I call your name, please come forward. Uh, this year we don't have uh, much in the way of uh, weight to pack in your suitcases, since most of you come from elsewhere. Uh, so I'd like to have Trevor Dickinson come up and, and uh, from AE and Technologies. And uh, thank you, Trevor, for your sponsorship. Uh, thank you very, very Fantastic much. belts and shields and ties. Hey, I love that. She always wears that. That's fantastic. Oh, thank you. Um, but she's given no one. That's cool. All right. You know what? I think, I think, oh, we no, I, oh, I tell you what, we'll both sure, sure. <laughs> Ready? Thank you, Lehman from Amiga Kips. <laughs> This is another one of those people we could never pay to do what he's done for us. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and the Amiga users of Calgary, and I'm going to call Len Hagblad up here to get this one. Uh, since uh, Stephen has another one to get. So that's how we had from uh, Amok, the Amiga users of Calgary, Canada. Thank you for your time. <laughs> and last but far from least, uh, Stephen Soley, who is uh, representing Hyperion Entertainment, uh, who has sponsored the show this year. And thank you for your untiring efforts to get this to happen. It takes a bit. from our presence, and uh, he was uh, definitely a, a mover and a shaker in this event, and also for Amiga 30 in many other ways. I'm a very faithful club member, and I, I'd like to acknowledge uh, his uh, wife Cynthia and his daughter Ginger are here this evening with us, uh, and uh, we really appreciate your presence. Thanks for coming. Um, 
So we'd like to give out the uh, 2017 Dan Klosko Award, and here's what the citation reads. The Dan Klosko Award for Outstanding Service to the Sacramento Omega Computer Club for 2017 is presented to a man who has done more than most to support and develop Amu West as an Omega community gathering now and for the future. He's an expert in the information technology field, currently working on the innovative cutting edge in the IT industry. He has worked tirelessly to promote Amiga OS and the use of Amiga throughout the world. He is always brainstorming new approaches and ideas for Andy West and wants to see the Andyverse continue and thrive. He has volunteered his time and expertise as Andy West was founded in 1998 and has been an integral part of every Andy West show for each of the last 20 years. Among many other achievements, his technical innovation, first created in 1998 and improved and enhanced every year since, has brought Amy West to international attention through Amy West Broadcast and the User Group Network. The Dan Costco Award for 2017 for Outstanding Service to the Sacramento Amiga Computer Club at Amy West is presented to Bill Borsar. Fantastic. <laughs> you are welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Now, the backstory to this is he's usually on the phone to me every January. What are we going to do for the next January? I, and we talk throughout the year, spending many hours. Uh, you know, brainstorming some things. Some of them work, some of them don't. Uh, but uh, you know, the show has taken shape uh, a lot through uh, Bill's influence. We also have a second award uh, for uh, called the John Zacharias Award, and this is for technical assistance to the club. Um, yeah, John Zacharias Award for outstanding technical assistance to the Sacramento Olympic Computer Club for 2017 is presented this year to one of our most faithful SAC members. He's a network technician from way back and has worked for the state of California. He has spent a lot of his own time and effort promoting SAC to Amigas throughout the world. He's a great classic Amiga fan and is moving forward with the next generation. He goes about his volunteer tasks mostly silently, though he does succinctly and articulately express his opinion when appropriate. Then he resumes his quiet demeanor. He is adept at finding rare, obscure, unique information that is often used to authoritatively answer questions for SAC members who have about the Amiga platform. He is always available when there is work to be done and participates enthusiastically, but quietly. He has insightful and definitive views as a SAC officer that help keep us on track, and we could not do without him as our webmaster. The John Zacharias Award for 2017 is presented to Bill Clay. If you go to sac.org and click on the links page, you'll find all kinds of in in informational links to things throughout the world. And the ones that have disappeared in the intervening time, he is archived. So thank you very much for all that you do, which is pretty invisible. Uh, but really necessary. Thank you so much. This evening we have two of the founders of AMU West with us. Uh, two of the uh, original uh, AMU West committee members. And so I would like to have Roger Berry and Michael Salcedo stand, please. Uh, they were here 20 years ago. And <laughs> 21 years ago, that's right, because it took a year to plan the thing. Yeah. Uh, and this evening I've asked Michael to say a few words about how this all started and what the deal was and who participated and all that kind of stuff. So uh, if we've got a mic, do you have your mic on? Very cool. Oh, by the way, Michael is our vice president this year. Uh, so he has the hardest job in the, in the club, which is basically assembling every meeting. So he's in charge of the meeting. Uh, I say, welcome 
Come to order, and he does the rest. <laughs> Uh, I'm glad to see so many people still here after all these years. 21 years ago, John Zacharias and was the president of the club, and I was his vice president. He had been invited by a man named Bob Sharp to go to the Saint, what was called the St. Louis Amiga Show. Bob ran a very, a really wonderful show, and he had lots and lots of people attend there. And of course, a lot of people, even from here, may have gone once or twice. John went there specifically as a vendor to show his AE mail program, and he also carried the SAC banner, and SAC actually helped defray some of the, the table stuff. At the show, a guy from Santa Rosa named Alan Crandall walked up to his, his thing and says, you're from Sacramento, I'm from Santa Rosa, we ought to do this in California. And John said, nah, I don't, I don't think so, it's not, gonna, it's not gonna work. So John, came back, he talked to several of us privately and said, would you like to meet to maybe do this? With, this might be fun. So we got a bunch of us in the car uh, uh, and took us over, Roger and I and a couple other people, uh, drove over to Santa Rosa to meet with the Santa Rosa Club, which Alan was a member of. And we had a, they, they had their meeting at a pizza place. And their club was run really differently. They were eating pizza as opposed to what we play with Amigas. Yeah. And so we joined with them, we talked about them, would, would they help, would they, would they defray costs, do things like that. And there is only one guy, another Alan, who was the president of their club, said, well, we'll, we'll try to help. And we, so we came back to Sacramento and talked about it some more. We went to the club and said to the club, <coughs> uh, we said, and we said specifically to everybody, would you help work on this and would you help finance it? Ken Barton, who was the other person, said no. And he, had, and he had a large enough pe group of people. He was, by the way, the treasurer at the time. He had a large enough group of people to vote with him. The club did not want to sponsor the show. So, the, for, for, so we went back out and talked about what we could do. And we decided that we could form a volunteer group, a, a committee, where all of us volunteer, pay for things on our own. And if we got any money from it, that we would be reimburse ourselves if we, if we made enough, all of it, or we, percentages equal to, to how much we we would spend. So ultimately we went to the hotel called the Ramada Inn up here, uh, Fulton, and it was the cheapest place we could find. And it, it, it wasn't the best place, but it was the cheapest place we could find. Uh, Alan put the, uh, the down payment for the for the room on his credit card. Uh, uh, I put the down payment down for the food, and so because we didn't know how many people would come to the dinner. And if you recall, that's, that's also our first dinner. And so the five of us, Roger, myself, the two Allens, and a woman named Cindy, uh, were the committee. And we pretty much tried to run this on our own. However, we agreed that we didn't want to do what Bob Sharp had done, which was to run the thing as a business and actually get you know anything else, all proceeds from it. Uh, at, at the end, we were stupefied. On the first day, 587 people showed up. <laughs> It was just, it was fantastic, just every, that Saturday, it was just, we, we, we didn't have room, the parking lot was full, it, it was just, it was a wonderful res response. The, uh, and on Sunday, another 500 people showed up. So we had a really wonderful response, and we did in fact have enough money to pay ourselves back, and we set up a kitty that we would leave in perpetuity to keep paying for Emmy West every year. Uh, a couple years later, the bride became the president, I don't know how, you've been president as long as the media, as long as the show almost. Almost. 19 or 20 years? Uh, no, it was, I think, 2001. Uh, oh, maybe, no, it was 2000. You're yeah, right. right. It was 2000. So at that particular point, Brian brought it up to the club again, and the club they agreed to help sponsor. Now, every year, people from the club work really hard to help us bring stuff in, bring their own stuff. So it was a, it was a, a, a lot of physical effort from club members. So they never really didn't help. They just didn't want to be on the on the on the Ken and the guys didn't want to be on the on the hook for the money in case anything went wrong. But nothing did go wrong. Year after year, lots and lots of people came. Uh, and it, it's, it, now it changed a little bit when Bill Basari, who actually just started this build, were you here at 18 years? Uh, I was at the first. Yeah. You came to the first, but you didn't do the streaming thing. No, we did not IRC. We did IRC. You did IRC. I had a Bill McEwen on the. So we, we, we he started that at the same time, and that also essentially made this not only a local show, it also made it a worldwide show. 
And believe it or not, John Zacharias and I had a private conversation that the main reason that we wanted this to do the show was because the two dealers of Amiga stuff in Sacramento had closed, and we wanted the, the vendors to come to us. Because we didn't want to drive or fly, there was no eBay and internet. So we essentially enticed 28 vendors to come. But we would have never known how to get a hold of it, except that Bob Sharp, who was running his show, simply gave us his phone list. He just said, here, call all these guys. Maybe some of them will come. And through his generosity, we, we broke open our show. Um, and we, as you know, you can see, we've continued ever since, and it's still doing well. Plus, we have all this new stuff that's kind of wonderful to go through. Uh, and actually, there's probably, uh, I can see a lot of people that have been here almost the whole 20 years. So, Bill, I remember Bill helping bring stuff in on that first day. I didn't really even know who Bill was that day, but he brought stuff up. And now, also, my daughter helped at the door to take registrations and, and names, and this guy named Bill came and said, are you, are you an Amiga? And she looks at me and, she, and he, I said, well, she has her own 3000. He says, okay, and he hands her a Boing ball. And do you know who that Bill is? Yes. McEwen. Yeah. So he, he, he came and he was so, McEwen was so astonished that there were so many people there. I think we started him on the wrong path. Anyway, my daughter took the Boeing ball. She had actually made <coughs> um, paper mache Boeing ball halves, and we put them in what we call the baker room, which really the bar, and put them in the middle of every table, um, and, and kind of like a half cake with the red and white thing. And uh, <coughs> somebody took those home. Uh, all those half boy balls, they took them home. I, I, like a wedding reception, you know, they, they take the, the centerpiece. So, and somebody brought one back. <laughs> so I said, what are we going to do with this after all these years? Um, so we, did, we, did, we did good. We really enjoyed it when we started it. It's continued, but it wouldn't have continued without the strength of the club. The club actually continues to support itself and with each other. Um, we, we have to, we have to, because that's the only way we can, we can get this done. Uh, which is why I hope that you guys all keep supporting any facet of Amiga that you're comfortable with and you like, and, and bring it here, share it with us, and we'll, we'll share back. And so thank you for coming to Amiga West this year, and for all the many years you have come, and for the many years you will come. All right. Now, we've never given these out before. Um, because we never had a 20th show to give them out for. But I'd like to have uh, Roger and Michael come up here and get their Founders Awards uh, presented to them uh, on the occasion of the 20th show. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I have a John Dr. Rice Award, I have a Ken Barton Award, and now I have a Founders Award. <laughs> very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thinking about this year's banquet speaker, uh, we're at to the uh, uh, end of the awards at this point. Uh, I was thinking about the, the way that people get introduced to the Amiga. Uh, I've had friends who said, well, how can I try one of these things? You know, I don't, I don't have, you know, a thousand bucks to lay out or two thousand or whatever they cost. And I, and I try to sell them my old classics and they say, no, I want the latest thing. I, and I said, well, you know, the latest thing is, and some of the people here, we have, in fact, we have a new club member here uh, this evening, Jerry Gray, who got introduced this way through uh, running an emulator and playing old games on the emulator, right? Well, now he's become a club member this year, and he has real really good equipment. I, so, <clears throat> in thinking about this, I thought, you know, who in the community, and there's several people who have done this, but one who comes here, uh, and has been active in sort of blurring the line between emulated and native uh, in uh, hosting Amiga OS uh, is uh, graphic artist and icon master Ken Lester. Uh, and he's going to be our uh, banquet speaker this evening and describe more about that. Come again. My reality distortion field. This is, this is my, um, <coughs> um, 
with the team, uh, Brian asked me to, to do this. I, I emailed him back. He, there's got to be somebody more interesting to speak at the show. And he, uh, he sent me a nice email that, that convinced me that it, was a, that it wasn't a bad idea. It pretty much said exactly uh, what he said there in introducing me, that I was helping to blur the lines between uh, emulation and real equipment and, uh, and uh, basically redefine uh, a little bit of, you know, of, of what you mean could be in, in, in modern computers. And I'm talking, I just read out didn't turn this thing out. All right, can you hear me now? Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. My name is Ken Lester, and uh, I, as, as, as uh, Brian says, I'm, I, I'm a graphic artist, or I was a graphic artist back in, back in my younger days. And um, my claim to fame in the Amiga is something called Ken's Icons, which I created back in 2004, and I did them obsessively from 2004 to 2008. And uh, I think I made an impact. And that, that's where this reality distortion field comes in. This is my take on what happened and, and, and how the whole uh, visual elements of OS4 can be directly as a result, <laughs> um, indirectly from some, some of the efforts that I made. And uh, basically, um, I don't know how many people even care about the visuals of, uh, of what OS4, but there's um, Martin Mertz or Mason that designed all the icons for OS4 since the very beginnings. You know, I, I, he must have come on in 2001 or 2002 when they were first doing it. And uh, he, had, he had done uh, a full set of icons in 16 or 32 colors or something like that. And, and they, they were nice, but they were basically just a rehash of, uh, of Matchaput's glow icons, which were kind of the alternative to, uh, to Magic Workbench or Magic Workbench. Yeah, that's what they were called, right? Magic Workbench icons. You know, there was the gray stuff, and then there were these crazy geometric colored things. Hey, you like uh, new icons, yes. And Matt Chaput had basically, and, and, and I didn't know this at the time, but he had basically completely stolen Next icons, uh, their drawers and their library icons, and everything and brought it to Amiga. And I, thought, I thought they were awesome. And Mason thought they were awesome, too, because he carried it on. He, he designed hundreds and hundreds of icons, you know, as add-on packs for, for, uh, for Matt's uh, original set. And so Mason made it a name for himself just a little before I did. But um, he, he, he did the, the, these, these 32 color icons and it went out with the pre-release, the, the stuff that the beta testers had. And it was, it was okay, but it was basically the same old, same old. And then one day in 2004, he, he, he posted on uh, the uh, Amiga World forums one icon. It was a it was a monitor icon. It was a 256 color icon, and I know it see it seems like no big deal nowadays, but this was in the days of XP, and I don't I don't know if anybody really looked it's nasty looking you know stuff, <laughs> and we had equally nasty looking stuff, and this was revolutionary. It was 256 colors, and so I posted and I asked Mitch, how do you do this? How is this possible? You know like, and he responded, and I felt completely dismissed. I think. In retrospect, he responded honestly and, and to the best of his ability, but I felt dismissed and I was like, all right, I'm gonna figure this out. And uh, because of the way that I get focused and, and just go off on tangents, I created a whole icon set for the entire um, um, operating system and they were horrible, <laughs> but, <laughs> but for some reason everybody liked them. <laughs> and they were completely, you know, I'd rip off images because I, it, it, I didn't, you know, really care. I'd rip off an image here or something. And the drawer, the drawer set was was was, uh, was a complete rip off of, of a aftermarket set that MorphOS had at the time, which was highly geometric and, you know, wouldn't fly nowadays. But at the time, I thought they were great looking, and I thought it'd be cool if we had something like that. And so I figured out the whole 256 color icon because I never knew that Amigas could display 256 color icons. You know, they just could. And that's why, probably why Mason was so dismissive of me, because he's like, of course they could do that. So, basically, indirectly, what I had done, you know, the, you know everybody was using, using my stuff at the time. And to this day, you know, you'll see you, 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 some of the uglier workbenches, you know, that have, you know, 1.3 icons and, you know, and magic workbench icons. And, 
just you know, who, who don't care, you know, mostly, mostly developers and programmers. <laughs> 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 uh, but basically, I had done this whole set, um, made, you know, in 256 colors and did it, you know, I, I guess I took away the whole thunder of 256 colors. Mason threw his hands up and put the icons out um, uh, on naming it and said, this is what could have been, and started work on, working on um, 32-bit. And I don't, I don't know the, the, the details of who he got to program them or how to, but that's, that's kind of where the, the whole high, high, uh, high color icon things came from. He designed a set. And, um, and then he and I began talking, we became friends, and, uh, and, uh, and he, uh, he said, we should put your icons on the first OS4 release, you know, just add it to the CD of the contribution. And uh, so I, I spent a couple of contented months, and that's where I created my first real icon set. That was the, the one, that's the design that pretty much took off, and it's a, it was more, it, it fit the right size, and the, the color palette was correct. And I stopped ripping off imagery, imagery from all over the web and whatever, um, and did a genuine set. And then, uh, um, um, and then for whatever reason, uh, uh, the Freedom said, no, no, can't be on there. And so I just released it, and then um, and uh, uh, let me let me let me think. Okay, maybe that was the impetus for getting rid of the the, the two fifty six colors. Anyway, um, because then then the high color right icons came, came in. I told you this is this is the truth as well as I remember. It. <laughs> um, so uh, so uh, the high color icons come in and. Um, um, and I've, I've released this, Mason's given up, the high color icons came in, and again, beautiful stuff, and, but we couldn't do it on, on OS3, because I was an OS3 guy, you know, I, I couldn't afford the hardware for OS4, and, uh, and uh, well, that's not entirely true, I, I had made a decision years before to build Amiga instead of Pepsi, I decided that was the better way to go, um, you know, famous last word. Anyway, so I, uh, um, I was downloading probably for more OS4 Depot. If, if Depot was around in, in, in 2005 or 2006 or something, and uh, Omega OS4 had, a, had an icon, um, tra tra basically it was an image converter and it would convert it between the formats. So one of the formats was an Eros um, two ping image format. And I'm like, and they were 32 bit image, and I was like, okay, we could have a two image 32 bit format if we, you know, if we get these Eros icons. So I started asking the Eros developers, did, you know, does, does anybody know about this format? Nobody had ever heard of it. Apparently somebody early on had put it in, you know, had built it into Eros and they had either forgotten it or the guy that put it in was gone or something. Um, but there was a guy that was, was kind of, uh, I don't know if he, he was an Eros programmer, he was kind of on the outs with them and he, he, he did something called uh, AFA, which was, which was Eros for Amiga. He was trying to like port everything from Eros to uh, 68K. And, and I, I got in touch with him. His name is Bernard. Yeah, I cannot for the life of me remember what his last name was, but he's too old. But, uh, and I said, you know, is this something you, you could bring to, to 68K? And he was like, sure, I could do that. And so like, over the course of a few weeks, we, you know, I beta tested it and he hacked it together. And we created this uh, um, dual 32-bit icon format. And, uh, um, and released it long before OS4 got, got their 32-bit icons out. And we had these dual image, you know, you know, dual ping is what I called them, you know, that, I coined that format, icons. And, um, and Mason, so, but, so he threw the icons out again and you got the 64 by 64 icons that you guys all use now. And, uh, and then at that point I was like, all right, I'm done, no moss. But what has happened is the 32-bit the icons that I designed in 2007, 2008, became part of uh, Amy Kit, which has survived all these years, so they've become kind of iconic. And the Eros guy, there's a, a, an Eros distribution called Icarus that he had early on asked to use my stuff too, and he uses it. So in the 68K world, even if you don't know who designed them, the icons are all pretty much mine. And uh, so that's my claim to fame. Uh, but I, I, I did it very intensively from 2004 to 2008, and I've been milking it ever since. So, <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was time well spent. Um, anyway, um, 
But um, I'm trying to fast forward because well, this is what I was going to talk about. This is what Trevor said I should 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 say. I was I, I, I was going to talk about Alice because apparently that's what we're supposed to be talking. About. We're supposed to be talking about the, the technical aspects of Alice and how that came to be. So I think I'm. Yeah, I had a bunch of notes, but I think I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go off the cuff here and say Alice was Trevor's idea. The name is his idea. It's definitely got his fingerprints all over it. You know, think about the market, his, his type of marketing over the years. Alice is his, his deal. And uh, the, the way it started, I can remember uh, 2014 was my first Amy West show. And um, uh, Win UAE had just started emulating OS4. And, um, and I cannot remember uh, um, um, the dude with the, uh, uh, with the blog. Everybody loves the Aussie guy. Um, Epsilon. 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 Epsilon was here, and he was demonstrating, you know, uh, it running on on, uh, on the Mac under FSUAE. And I'm sitting there, and I had spent a lot of time working at, working on getting this thing configured and work, working working with a bunch of pe people on it. And so I was a bit of a know-it-all, but I, I I couldn't help myself. And so he'd be talking about it, and I knew, knew something about it. And Trevor talked to me the first, for the first time about the possibility of, you know, I said, it'd be cool if you could do a laptop that way. Um, only, I don't think I was on the radar at all, because he, he, he proceeded to uh, move forward with that, and he contacted uh, Jan, we call, call him Jan Za, because his last name is completely un, unpronounceable. <laughs> and everybody probably knows him as Jan, because his name is called J-A-N. So for the first five years I knew him, I called him Jan. Yes. And uh, and then somebody in uh, um, I took a class with a uh, uh, somebody from the, the Czech Republic, and I said, "How do you how do you, how do you pronounce it?" And he said, "Yeah." And so uh, uh, he was polite enough not to correct me; just let me call him Jan. Um, anyway, Jan and I uh, and then <laughs> um, Jan and I um, and I don't know if Trevor knew this or not, but we've been working since the very beginning. Uh, um, uh, uh, Amy Kit. Uh, uh, started in 2004. Actually, it was in uh, 2003 that he started putting, uh, working on it. He had asked me if he could use my icons, and I said no. And uh, and then he's a very persistent guy. I don't know you, any of your exposure to him, but eventually he said yes. And he, you know, he was. It was like I, I don't want you to use them because they, you know, a directory Opus 5 cannot display 256 color icons. They look awful, and it'll just make me look bad, you know. Um, and what I didn't realize at the time is that there was an awful set too. But you know everything else was worse, so you know it looked great by comparison. <laughs> um, so uh, Jan Jan uh, got somebody to, to modify. I think it was Bernard actually to modify Directory Opus Five so that it could display these icons a little better. They still weren't great. And so I'm like, all right, all right. And so I've been working with him for ten years uh, at this point, And Jan was like, he he came to me and said. Uh, Trevor Dickinson wants to do a laptop and he wants to put Amy Kidd on it. You've got to help me do this <laughs> because because I had been playing with Linux for a few years. I, I did a Linux distribution called Amy Pup, and um, and it was just I was just doing the same thing that on uh, Linux that I had done on the Amiga, and uh, which is paint it. You know, like really at the end of the day, people 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 ask you know you know I me mean, well, what do you do with your Amiga? It's like you know it's like you know it's like you know I'm an artist so you must use graphics software it's like painfully little. I, I like perfect paint and that's about the only only paint program in the media that, that I really have much experience with. I was going to say use for but that's not fair because if you haven't used it how can you say you don't have use for it? But what I do on the Amiga is I, I don't paint with it, I paint on it. And and that's, it's not just the Amiga, it's like with Linux, I paint on it and, and that's what interests me is taking things apart and figuring out you know how they work and making them look a certain way. And at some point in my life, I got completely fixated on the look of OS 4. And so basically, you know, there are, there are themes floating around for Morph OS, for Linux. Um, it, it, anything that I've played around with, i probably themed to look like OS 4. So uh, <laughs> you know, I, I think, you know, maybe, maybe, my, maybe my work has, has been displayed on more computers than OS 4. So, you know, maybe I've got a case for, you know, for uh, eminent you're claiming this, but uh, the, uh, the, the reality is, I just whoever designed that first design, you know, did a, did a brilliant job because it came out at a, at a time when it was competing against um, XP, which looked awful, 
and you know, it, was, it had some great underpinnings, but it just looked awful. And OS 4 came out, and it, it, was, it was beautiful. The, you know, the icons were still a few years off, but, uh, but, but, the, the, but the, the raw, the raw um, physicality of it is, is great. And so anyway, so I, I copied that and painted it. I brought it to OS 3, I brought it to Linux. But anyway, okay, I digress. I'm gonna, I, I should be saying that a lot. So I had done this Linux distribution, and in it I had created GTK themes that looked like OS 4, and I created uh, gadgets and figured out how to uh, sort of reconfigure the windows so that they work the same way as, as, uh, um, as, as they make it did. And at least with Amy Pup, I had created, um, actually that, that would be my latest, I had created an entire set of icons for, for this Linux distribution. And, uh, and so, um, and you know, I knew about this, and I had been creating this, and, and I had created this thing that, uh, where you could launch Linux programs inside of, uh, of EUA, e running on Linux, and uh, which Trevor renamed Redhole, because it's, uh, it, it's, it, it uses a couple of scripts that basically <coughs> talk to the Linux system and, uh, and launch applications which is really, really counterintuitive because let, let's say you're on Linux and you want to run a Linux program, are you going to use a win Windows uh, abstraction layer to do it? No, so it's like you go asking around and people say, you know, it's like, why would you want to do that? You can't do that. And I figured a way to do it with a, a script on one, uh, uh, on the Linux side and, and that, well, actually, it's, it's a Windows script on the Wine side, it's not really Linux, and a script on the Amiga side and then I, did some tricks with the registry and wine, and got it to recognize applications on the other side. Uh, so we had we had that as a basis. We had Trevor wanted to do a laptop. He says he'd want to do it for a long time. So you know, so he wants to you know outside of everything else he's doing, he wants he wants to get that going. And we got Jan who says I have to I have to make it happen. So I started I started messing around with it, and um, and, and I got it to a, a certain point, but. My knowledge of Linux runs mostly skin deep because that's all I was interested in, and so I told um, Jan to tell Trevor that I need a Linux guy. I need a Linux guy, and uh, and he got he got Pat Wall, who uh, um, and Pat Wall had been circulating this video that he had created of OS4 booting on a laptop by a Linux, and so it was a case of let's just do that and. Uh, and I think the, the first Alice laptop, which we displayed here in 2015, we had pretty much assembled it in a matter of two or three weeks. It was it was held together by bailing wire and, and, and chewing gum. It was it worked and it was great in that circumstance. But we had no way to transfer it to another machine. We had it was it was you know and we weren't we weren't intending to sell it at that show. We were just strictly you know offering it up, saying this is this is what it was, this is what it is. And you know, I, I think there was some interest. It, it seemed to be anyway. But people thought it was something way more than it is. You know, it's like it's it, it, it's really a simple simple implementation. It's just time consuming. You know, anybody could do it if you want to spend the time. And and you have so many graphics abilities because you know, again, it was a canvas for me. Um, but uh, between Pat's Linux Linux know-how. Because he did things like uh, he, he he created a way so that that um, uh, it would launch when when the system launches. But we still you know it's not a headless system. We still have Linux running there, so we can run the apps and everything. And then when you shut down the emulation, it shuts down the computer. You know it, you know as far as, as far as it's concerned, you know that's what it's there for. You know there's ways to trick it to not do that, but you know basically you know it's 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 a visual thing. So we had we had that. So we had the system. In 2015, and then um, we proceeded to find out exactly how hard this really was as a product. Because this this is a you know, very hands-on, very very custom. There, you know, nobody's manufacturing these things for us. And uh, and I think over the course of you know the next year, you know, we the, the initial laptops we had those quickly stopped being manufactured, and we had, had to find something else. And we found some Lenovo's, and Pat set up a bunch of Lenovo's, and and we were going to sell those at any you know. It, it, it took a long time. I'm actually jumping forward. You know, it's like over the course of a year. It took a long time to get it into a state. Um, and, and Pat had come up with a way that we could reinstall it. It was very, very, you know, very, very uh, uh, tech uh, tech oriented. It was. 
I didn't find it terribly intuitive, but uh, whatever, it was a way to do it. And, um, and it, there's this great picture that he took that we all saw, I don't, I don't know if it was actually published anywhere, where he had like five or six of them in a line running, and you know, they were all set, and you know, they were in England, and, and, and Matthew had them, and I think Matthew still has most of them. And Trevor brings, brings them to, for us to sell the show, and they, you know, and as people remember, uh, you know, they, it's, like, it's, like, it's like they disappeared. You couldn't keep them in stock. Uh, somebody broke the window and, and they went all the stole, <laughs> stole, stole the, you know, the, the, the Alice stuff, stole his, uh, his prototype Alice, it stole some other things, which, you know, you know. His passport. Trust. His passport. <laughs> Cash. You know, which is why he's never left. He's been <laughs> um, so, uh, so that was kind of a failure. We, we tried to salvage, you know, the weekend. By the way, this is last year, this is 2006. We tried to salvage it. Tre Trevor went out and bought more machines, and, and I stayed up late, and I installed the whole system on it. It was a different machine, so I did start from scratch. Um, but, it, but, it, but it seemed to work, and uh, Robert, who's filming over here, was our first, first customer. And then the system went blue. You know, it's like, it was all done, it was ready to go. It was the end of the show. We had, Pulled off selling at least one of them, and it wouldn't boot. And uh, and it was just uh, I mean, so it was kind of back to the drawing board. And also, un unbeknownst to everybody else, I was done. The project was done, and I'm not a I'm not interested in manufacturing or production or supporting a Linux system. So uh, I talked to Alex Perez uh, at the show. I, 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 let me back up a little bit. There was one there was one little problem with something with uh, with. Uh, we needed some Linux kernel support or something, and I and I introduced myself to Alex, and because uh, Trevor had said, you know, I said I need a Linux guy, and Trevor said, you know, Alex, and so I introduced myself and I told him my problem. I said, can you help me? He goes, yes, yes, I can, and he came over, and sure enough, he fixed it, and so um, uh, time went on, and I asked Alex if he would take my place, <laughs> basically, and uh, and become you know the the support and um, the Linux guy because he he was obviously more, more qualified. I already painted it, I already done the thing I wanted to do. And so Alex, you know, Alex took over my job and I stepped away and, and I was done and now I could just sit back and watch, you know, watch them sell these things and have fun. And then one thing led to another and, uh, you know, it wasn't happening, you know, it, Alex has entirely different ideas about how to do this and his ideas are a lot more hands-on and a lot more, uh, uh, broad spectrum, you know, he wants to do, well, I'll, I'll get to that, I'll get to that. Um, <laughs> so anyway, so, uh, I guess this past summer or something, um, I had an epiphany at Alice, something I wanted to try, and uh, and I can't remember if I, if, if I Skyped with Trevor and said, can I try this, or if I just did it, and then said, I did this, what do you think? Yes. Is that what I did? <laughs> yeah, that doesn't surprise me. So, I, over the course of a few months, I completely started from scratch, I rebuilt it, and the Alice that we have here for sale, and by the, by the way, regardless of what Amiga News D says, we had considerably more than one for sale, and we won't say how many, but we had more than one, um, and they sold, they all sold out, and, and they, basic, they were basically sold before the show even started. It was a case of, we had too many people that were interested in it, and totally misjudged you know, the, what the interest would be, so sorry. Um, but, uh, but there'll be more, obviously. Um, you know, so people just can't take take them home with, home with them. Um, but um, I lost my train of thought. Okay. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. So I completely reinvented it. It's it's now on 16.04, which it was not really. It was kind of on 16.04 last year. It was some hybrid of 14 14.04 with a 16. 10 kernel or something? I don't know. Anyway, 16.04 with a 17.10 kernel, and because Alex wants more, more up-to-date uh, kernel support for more hardware. And um, thanks to Tony Wyland's work, and you know, this is really, you know, most of the up, uh, upgrades that I'm going to talk about are strictly because of, of, of Tony and his work on the new AE. Um, last year, we our displays were 1566 by 768, because that was basically the max that we could do with OS 4 without you know, you know, completely saturating um, the four gigs, uh, four gigs, four megs of uh, the Picasso 96 emulation. But Tony and added uh, um, native when you or uh, when graphics support 
excuse me, UA graphic support. So now we can go whatever, you know. I, theoretically, I'm guessing there's some kind of limitation that would prevent us from going uh, 4K because of something on the Amiga side, but I don't know, maybe, maybe not. Uh, but for sure, you know, we, we can go much higher resolution, much faster. Um, he added, um, um, oh, let me, let me give Hyperion credit, even though they probably don't want it. Thanks to something that Hyperion did, we now had more memory, because prior to that we've been limited to uh, I think 128 megs or 256 if you wanted to do it differently. But now we have more memory, we have higher, higher uh, dis d display speed, you know, bigger displays, you know. Um, and now we have access to uh, the host system. Because prior last year, it was a pain in the butt to get software to the emulated Amiga uh, OS 4.1 environment, but now we had access to we had access to the uh, to the native to the uh, host system. So totally different, totally Tony's work. You know, none of our doing. We just benefit from it. So uh, um, so so I rebuilt Al's from the ground up. But the epiphany that I had was how to restore it, and um, and uh, I was. Just, driving with my brother one day, and, uh, and he takes complete credit for it. He said he was a good influence. I'm like, you didn't, you didn't come up with this idea. He said, but, you know, but I have a way of, a way of people. Um, so anyway, so we came up, I came up with this epiphany, and I did the whole thing, and it didn't work. Um, but I had, I had redone it, and, uh, um, and so I, I refined the way we had been doing it before into something Basically, I could understand, and if I could understand it, then you know the average person can do it. And now you can restore the system because you're going to screw it up. I mean, that's it's the nature of the beast. This is this is you know this is a very 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 esoteric setup. And uh, if you run Windows, you're going to screw it up because Windows just loves to break this thing. And uh, um, uh, but now we have a way to restore it easily. And so it, it's it's it, it, I don't want to say it's robust, but it's. It, 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 it's easy to fix now when you, when you break it. And uh, so, you know, we're, we're, ready, we're ready to roll out. It's just a matter of, if, of how many people are going to be interested. And hopefully everybody that wants one will eventually, over the course of the next couple of years, whatever, we'll get them. And because these things are hand-built, you know, we, we, we don't have, you know, the luxury of uh, buying 500 motherboards and stacking them up and card up, you know, like these guys like to do. Um, uh, you know, you know, these, the laptops, we've been through four, I believe we've been through four, laptop, four laptops in the last two years, you know, that, that, that this has been going on. And uh, if Alex has his way, it's going to be four more in the next two weeks because he wants to bring in all sorts of things. And what he brought to the, con to the uh, convention were. Um, an Acer laptop that I lobbied really hard for because I'm just in, in love with the, the. It's a cheap laptop that does fit really well at, at, at what we're trying to do. So I lobbied for that, and those are the ones that all sold out. And he's got some some higher end um, uh, business style laptops. They're smaller, but they they have more memory, and more speed, and they're just um, you know they're more portable and thin. flexible. Thin, thin, and light, and uh, and uh, uh, less cartoony, and uh, um, and uh, and he brought some uh, uh, bricks desktop machines. They're these little little portable machines that uh, can attach to the back of a monitor with a that would be some model. So and, and and he continually comes up with more machines. And you know the idea, I guess, is, is I create an install for each one. It's it's a little bit labor intensive, but it gives a lot more options down the road. And so somebody that wants a cheap entry level cartoon machine like I want um, can buy one for X number of dollars. Am I allowed to say how much you sell them for? At the show right now, he's been selling them for, for $600. And, um, and uh, I, I don't know if that's what, that's, that's what they're going to be all along. Um, it feels a little thin on the profit margin, but whatever, you know, as a none. But, um, you know, at least people, people are getting them and they have something that they can, they can play with. Which comes back to the whole reason to have a lap, uh, Alice laptop at all, which is um, the blurring of the lines between emulation and and um, real hardware. And um, 
the reality is we have some really nice real hardware right now, you know, regardless of the state that they're in. We've got the X5000, which is a beast. It, you know, I, I, by the way, I have an X5000 and I have a table war uh, since the last show because I, I'm insane. But the X5000 is a beast. It's very powerful. It does, you know, it's com apparently completely unoptimized, but I, I, whatever. You know, it's like people can complain about it or, or say, but it's like, it's the fastest Amiga that I've ever owned in my life. And, uh, and then the Tabor, which is my favorite. <laughs> and, it's like, and it's hard to explain, but it, it feels like the true successor of the Amigas that I like. You know, the Amiga 500, the Amiga 1200, everything's on board, which, um, which is a hassle for the developers, but who cares? You know, they, have to, they have to support it. <laughs> um, so, uh, so <laughs> it's this elegant search, everything's on board. And uh, and it runs OS4 really nicely. Um, you know, it's like, I, and I'm sure it will just get better. And uh, as far as that whole F FTP thing, it's like, I don't really see what the big deal is. Haven't we always had FTP crippled machines and different compiles of software? And you know, and it just really feels like a non-issue to me. But, yeah. I, yeah. What did I say? FTP. FTP. That's what I meant. We don't FTP. have FTP. FPU. The point is. Um, Whatever you know, it's like you know, it's like we'll have we'll have a uh, we'll have a, um, SPE versions of, of certain software. I think Trevor has plans to his stuff anyway. There will be SPE versions of it, and uh, presumably, you know, pe people that are still developing today, they'll they'll quickly start you know, compiling an, an extra version. It's not like there's that many right now. We have OS four, one flavor, and and this one. And you know, if you want to do more collabs, you know, 688, whatever. I, I, it really feels like a non-issue. It's just something to complain about. Um, they're great machines. They're, they're, they're great hardware. But we live in a different time now than we did when the media first came out. Back then, a photograph was something you held in your hand. It's something you put in a photo album. It's something, and how many people still take photographs and get them developed and put them in a photo album? None. Well, given the age of the room, probably a few. But <laughs> but uh, most people, uh, uh, most people, it's, it's digital. You know, it's it's, it's something. It, 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 it takes a while, you know, to wrap your head around. It's probably, um, probably you don't remember. But it's like I, I had some trouble with the idea of, of not actually owning it. Music, we had vinyl or or or. I, Tape, I was going to say it. I can remember eight tracks and uh, and cassettes and CDs and all this stuff. Where's your music now? It's 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 an MP3 file on your, on your computer, or you don't even own MP3, you know music at all. It's just on a service that you you stream. You know, it's like movies. It's like we you know we've owned uh, you know you know VHS and DVDs and and Blu-rays. And how many people still do that? Some. You know, it's like. Yeah, I see the gray hair, so. Um, <laughs> um, I want to hold it. <laughs> that's what I'm it's talking about. Like, like magazines. <laughs> it is, it's like, it, it's, but it's, it's not, now what do we do? We stream it, you know, you might own it, you, you might own it on one of the streaming services, you know, maybe. But the point is, um, our experiences are more, more ethereal now, and they don't necessarily exist in, in real life. And the Amiga has kind of become that. I mean, it's like in the old days, you know, you know, there was the Amiga 1000 and, and 500, and 12. there was hardware. And to this day, each one of them is iconic. How many people feel that way about their their micro Amiga one? You know, how many how many people care? No, it's it is it is it has changed. Now it's about the software. It's about this ethereal thing. It's OS4. You know, and what can we run it on next? And Emulation or virtualization or whatever you want to call it is just an extension of that. It's it's the thing that you love, which has now become the OS. You know, it's been detached from from the, the physical, and now it, it it doesn't have to to necessarily be a piece of hardware. It can be, you know, in an emulated environment. And we of all people should be sympathetic to that. We were the first emulators. We were doing Macs, and you know, in different in, you know, incarnations. And PCs, and uh, you know, it's like we started this. You know, it's like, and, and, the, and the, the the line was, we can emulate everyone else, but nobody can emulate us because you know, too many custom chips and too too much you know timing, and you know, it's just not possible. And then uh, UAE came out, and 
about in 98, 97, something like that. And, uh, and it was bad, and all it was was proof that we couldn't be emulated, but it just got better and better and better. And there came a point in the early 2000s when it was better than most Amigas we could have. And, um, and those of us that no longer had Amigas, you know, uh, that, was, that became my Amiga. And uh, so I started taking all the stuff that was on my, my 3000 and, you know, and everything that I collected over there and recreating it in, in, a, in a virtual way including my old Commodore. So uh, today I have, a, I have a laptop that has my old Commodore environment. It, 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 it's from, I have a very spotty history with, with going back to Commodore, because Commodore, never mind. <laughs> Com I was a Commodore guy, not an Amiga guy. I kind of resent the Amiga because they're, they're stealing resources. You know, they could be better spent on the 8-bit machine. <laughs> I've, I've never been great at predicting, you know, which but uh, um, so my, you know, if, when, I, when I built my house back in '93, '94, I was back on the on the 128 again, and that whole environment now runs on Vice. I have converted all my my floppies, and I, I had a hard drive, uh, and so I've got all my hard drive partitions on there, and I've got all the plans from when I was building my house and the specs and the lists and the and the bills I had to pay from, from building it. This is a you know, I, I, I load that up and, and I don't really do anything with it, but it's a snapshot of my life. Yeah. And it's and it you know and I can look at the things that I was doing. And um, yeah. and um, the same with there was a, a, a brief period when I would I I, I I bought a Macintosh because um, I used to be a, a comic book artist in in the nineties and in and uh, in 94, I bought a, a Performa 575 so I could run this new new program. It was new to me and it was called Photoshop. And uh, and because uh, I thought it would be great for coloring comic books because co comic books were not colored with computers. I have that entire environment emulated. It actually runs best on the Amiga. Uh, there's there's, uh, there's uh, a Basilisk for the PC, but it runs better on the Amiga, believe it or not. Um, but my whole environment there, and the, the graphics files that I created, which are so simplistic by today's standard, but my whole life from that period is, is saved there. So th these are photographs or snapshots of pieces of my life. And the Amiga has carried on thanks to WinUAE, which started early and has continued on. Even, you know, even when I've had real hardware, I, I always felt like my real computer was, was WinUAE. So, I've spent years on IRC, and I don't think I've ever really seriously irc on real hardware. It's always been on WinUAE. Because I'd be at Windows and doing something, and I could pull up UAE and open up WikiChat and, and chat away. And so I had come to the, con you know, the conclusion that my real Amiga didn't exist in hardware anymore. It existed in software. So with Alice, we're bringing this all together. You know, it's like gives you the opportunity to bring, take your Amiga around. It's, it's not going to replace the real hardware. You know, like I said, X5000 B, 1222, true successor. But you know, if you want to take it out into the world, if you want to sit at a coffee shop and whatever you guys do, program or whatever, if you're, when you're not painting your Amigas, right? Um, you know, it, it goes with you. And uh, at, what Alice is is nothing special. It is everything that was out there. It was it was everything we all knew could be done, but nobody had ever really taken the time to do it. And uh, um, and I wouldn't have done it if, if it wasn't for the fact that you know it's like I've got this guy, you know, saying you know Let, let's do this and Jan going he Jan is is, is spastic you know he's like works works works. I, I wouldn't have done it. It's like and some of the stuff was so impossibly hard to figure out. There's I would have given up, but. Um, but there were resources, you know, Pat Wall, I, I don't know how long he actually spent on it, but he briefly run through how anybody can create their own Alice system, because presumably, once I tell you how to do it, you won't do it, because why, you know, what's your time worth to you? You know, presumably a lot more than, than cost, cost of this laptop. First of all, you have to understand how dual boot works, and dual boot is, you know, it's something I love to do. But you know, most people, it's just, it's just, it's just awful. Especially dual booting with Windows. <laughs> Windows does not like to coexist with other software. At least it doesn't um, in its current current state. So the first thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to make some changes to Windows, and just do a web search, dual booting with Windows, and they'll tell you what to do. And keep in mind and, and practice that because you're going to have to do it over and over again. Every time there's a major update, 
or, or Windows just feels like it. It's going to change some settings, and it, it might even reach out and reset your BIOS. And so it's like you got to deal with that. Okay, that's 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 the first start. So so you so you, you've got to learn to dual boot with Windows. You're going to repartition your hard drive. You're going to install um, Linux, and then presumably get it working, getting Windows get Windows working again because you know Windows will have not like something about the way that. Uh, 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 your Linux software. Um, <laughs> anyway. anyway, so you, now, you've got, now you've got Windows, you're dual booting with, with Linux. Everybody does that. Okay, a lot of people do that. Okay, I do that. Um, and now you want to turn this in, into a uh, booting UAM. Uh, there's so many little things that I'm leaving out. I'm trying to explain how to do this, but okay. Don't tell them too much. Don't tell them too much. <laughs> no, I think if I tell them everything, nobody's gonna, in the right mind can do this. Um, you yeah, you're going to have to decide how how you're going to boot the simulation. And uh, Alice actually has it, it runs WinUAE on Wine, but it also has FSUA installed, which is the Linux version of the uh, uh, of the emulation software. And uh, maybe I should just go in and talk about some features because there's, there's some cool things in there that are, that are in there that you'll probably never see if I'm playing. Anyway, so you've got to get inside how you're going to boot it. And then getting it to boot is, you know, there's a bunch of different ways. Um, all we did was just go into uh, the Linux um, startup menu and say, it just added to the, you know, to the boot. So it boots, boots at boot time. Okay, good. Now you've got, you've got that, that started. You've got to figure out how to get it to shut down at the end if you want it to shut down, if you want to, you know, to have, any, have any kind of immersion at all. And so you're going, to have to, you're, going to have to, you're going to have to write some scripts and make some modifications to the FSTAT file. You know, which you'll learn about when you're trying to configure configure Linux, so that it so that it does that. Now you've got a system that <coughs> behaves like Alice, and but you still because you didn't have Ken painting your your system, it doesn't look like Alice. And so if you want Linux to not look like Linux, you, you you're gonna have to you're gonna have to theme it, and you uh, you, uh, you gotta give up. It's just, it, the the point is. It's so involved. Nobody in the right mind is, is gonna is gonna do it, you know. And I, I, I guess you know that's the challenge. Do it, you know. It's like if somebody can do it better, great. Um, but it, it's just so involved. It's not worth it, you know. It's like we're selling this thing for almost cost, um, you know. So it's like you know, buy it and tear it apart and do it better. Um, okay. Update uh, um, uh, Alice. Um, a lot of people wonder why we why we're doing the WinUA thing, running emulate you know Windows emulation software on Linux. Well, we didn't you know you know we didn't want to run Windows. We we didn't want to run it on top of Windows. We wanted to run it on Linux. And quite frankly, the Windows on Wine approach works works better for us than, than the FSUAE, which is the Linux uh, version of WinUA right now. But he's working on it, and it may get better. And so. Um, Alice has the ability, you know, all you got to do is, is change the, uh, the, the, the boot settings to select FSUA and it'll boot from FSUAE. The repositories are already set, you can download it, you know, it's like, you know, you're good to go. It's, it's already pre configured here. Um, um, I'm trying to think of what, what else should I, should I talk about. Um, we have OS 4.1 on there, it's, it's the latest, greatest. And since last year, Trevor has uh, asked that we include the enhancer software. So it has it has enhancer software. It has legal ROMs. You know, it's like um, that's that's a big one. That's probably been the biggest impetus in getting getting something like this out sooner was the fact that you've got you've got to have uh, licensed um, um, uh, ROM. You know. The system ROMs, you've got to have licensed PowerPC ROMs, you've got to have licenses for, uh, what am I forgetting, uh, MUI, uh, um, uh, Sun Z has given permission you know, to use the MUI license on here. You've got to have licenses for uh, uh, the enhancer software. Uh, uh, what am I missing? OS 4.1. OS 4.1. You've got OS 4.1. Mega Forever, you've got a license for Mega Forever, um, so you've got a package of like licenses, and from people from disparate, it's not like one organization. You know, it's basically because Trevor can go go to these people, and say, hey, do this, and these people and do this. So 
that, that's, another, that's another barrier you know, that, that has been lifted. This is a system that is just turnkey, it just works. Um, it's available now, so like, some people will, will go home with it. Um, surprising people to me, you know, really surprising. The, the people that bought it, I'm very surprised. Um, but that's cool. Um, and oh, I should look at my notes. Did I, <laughs> did, I, did, I, did I tell you how great I was and how the, the, the whole graphic subsystem is, is my, is my uh, oh, there's uh, also sweat. What's that? Say, look, there's those rivers of sweat. Rivers of sweat. Yeah, it's like I totally went off script, and you know, it's like so anything that I practiced didn't work out. Um, one thing though is uh, if I missed anything, you know, and, I, and you know, I try not to talk over anybody's head, but you know, I get excited about this stuff. It's it's, it's really what I like to do, and quite frankly, you know, I would have prob probably done something similar even without Trevor's intervention at some point because you know, because it was kind of where I was going. But um, you know, to have somebody that's interested in having me do it is, is really, really motivational. Does anybody have any questions? Is there something I haven't covered? You know, it's like I, I know this only appeals to a certain segment of the population who isn't convinced that you know uh, uh, a virtual experience is is the way to go yet. But um, but is, are there any questions or? Yes, sir. So. Why don't you just go Windows 10 and Win UAE? Why is Linux needed? It's just because you know, everybody hates Windows, don't they? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no, seriously, seriously. Um, yeah. Because I had skinned Linux, you know, and I, and I can skin Linux, and I can. You can create this this effect because when you're using it, you, 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 you get lost in the effect that you know all these Linux applications, uh, uh, Firefox, which is my browser choice, and I guess. People use uh, LibreOffice, that's on there, I don't know. And Skype, you know, Trevor requested Skype on there, and it works, you know. He's been using it for a couple of years, and it seems to work. Um, so it's, 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 a, it's about the sort of fully factor, you know. It's like, you can't do that in Windows. It's going to look like Windows, you know. If, if, you, if you load up Windows uh, 4.1 and Amy Kit, um, you know, are, are on there configured very, very quickly. So you can be in Windows and launch them. And if you can, Radical still works, it still launches Firefox, still, still launches Skype and stuff, but it's not the same. So I guess the truth is I did both, you know, it's like, they're both there. So it's like, it just doesn't auto boot, but if you want to do that, drop it in the startup folder, it'll, it'll boot, and you can, so it's like, you can recreate that in Windows 10, so you have to. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm interested in the, in, you know, you skimmed over the fact all very quickly about your, your uh, graphic artist, comic uh, books and things. Oh yeah, well, because I tried, I tried mentioning it uh, last year when I when I spoke, and I heard crickets when I brought it up. So, because I, <laughs> um, I was, uh, my lifeline goal as a kid was to be a comic book artist, and uh, and uh, in the, the early '90s through mid '90s, I did draw comic books, and uh, I didn't draw for Marvel comics, but you know, it's probably probably a good thing because they're still here. You know, it's like, you know, because anything I touch seems to. I have the anti Midas touch. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, we've got Amiga. You know, look, you know, it's like you know they probably be you know you probably you know wouldn't have ever heard of Macintosh if you'd written out of it you know, if I had. Uh, um, no, I, I drew uh, for uh, I did some stuff for Image Comics for Ripoff Press for you, you know you guys unless you you do know okay something you know um, I ran a club. caliber <laughs> did what you do I ran a major comic club. Oh, did you? Okay, okay. Well, yeah, I was done in about by it. I, I might have had some stuff in '99 or 2000 published, but it was just so so bad because I didn't have a, I didn't have a big career. Mm -hmm. But I did I did uh, self-publish, and I had something called Five Star Comics, which doesn't really do much of anything. It has a website, which I have I've had since '96, and uh, but mostly my brother does the stuff on there because you know, I got I got ID. Um, so I did that, and I was a graphic artist. Um, during this period, you know, my day job was I was a graphic artist. I ran the graphic artist department for a school system, which meant that I did publications and, and lots of uh, desktop publishing. So I, I, I used Macs, because Macs were desktop publishing machines. Um, and um, so I used, Mac, I, I used Macs for that. And then, you know, you know, when, uh, you know right about the time that I, you know, Killed the Amiga, you know. I, uh, I switched careers because I became a single dad and needed to have a more flexible schedule and, and quite 
quite frankly, more money. And so, uh, so I've been doing something entirely unart related ever since, which is probably why I'm so desperate to do things like that. <laughs> um, but the whole icon thing, that was just, you know, it's like I was, I felt dismissed, and you know, it's like I was going to figure it out. And, and then one thing led to another, and now you guys have these beautiful icons. That and, you, and, and I don't think you've counted, but Mason has redone the icon, icon throws for five times. And, uh, you know, it's like, you know, everybody likes to say nothing has happened, you know, but it's like on the front that really matters, the visual front. Um, the, the visuals have been updated five times, and there's one still waiting in the wings that we've been sitting on, or waiting for, for you know, since it became revealed in the wiki a couple of years ago. That there were these giant, you know, massive icons that poor Mason worked on, and you know, and, and they're just you know growing old and, and, and out of date. I, I suppose you got to wait a certain amount of time so that they're retro enough that. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I would just like to see them released, okay? Um, I think that's a hint, Steve. Just, <laughs> just, just saying. Or, or if somebody wants to just, you know, leak them out on the web somewhere, I, I wouldn't complain. Right? <laughs> um, accidents happen. Or, <laughs> accidents happen. You know, like, who's going to blame you? Um, but anyway, yeah, that's, that's, where, that's where the graphic arts stuff comes from. And, and, and occasionally I bring it up. And like I said, usually I hear crickets because, you know, it's like, because it's like, you know, there's all sorts of nerd, nerd camps, and this is just one of the ones that I belong to. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and uh, um, you know, and, so, and you know, there's lots of crossover too. So. Any, any other questions? Yes, sir. Which version of Linux did you use? Uh, oh, that's actually a story. <laughs> it's not an interesting story, but it's a story. <laughs> um, no. um, Pat Wall wanted to use Ubuntu. And because I wanted to use Puppy Linux, because it's the one that I, you know, which is this it's very small thing. <laughs> but he wanted to use a Ubuntu. And I wanted anything that used GTK2. If you know what the heck GTK2 is, it's just known to look at two. And, um, and, it, and uh, Mate is the, the spiritual successor of GTK2. And, uh, but they so, use GTK3 now. They do, don't they? And it, it breaks everything, damn yes, it. it does. <laughs> But, at the, but when we first started this, it was, it was basically GTK2 with a very smattering of GTK3. Um, so it was, it was Ubuntu because Pat wanted it, and Mate because I wanted uh, 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 the GNOME toolkit, because it's what I had learned to paint on. And, and so Ubuntu Mate. And as it turns out, that just happened to be what the Linux guys were using on uh, uh, their distros, you know, their, you know, their twice weekly you know, up, re updates to the, the ISO. Daily. Twice daily, <laughs> yes. Um, uh, so, so it was, it was, there was a nice synergy there. So Ubuntu made it six, and we were using 14.04, uh, uh, which was, uh, for some reason, I fixated on that, that I liked that, that, that version. And, uh, and uh, we switched to 16.04 with a 17.1 kernel, and that's the nice, nice week. Okay. You mean the same, uh, Version of Linux that they, they were using for the PowerPC issue. Isn't that what I said? No, I didn't hear that part. So oh, okay. Yes, it was the same same version of Linux. Cause the the, the uh, PowerPC Linux guys are just insane. You know, they they. they PowerPC Amiga. What did yeah. I say? PowerPC Linux. The the PowerPC Amiga Linux guys. Yes. Too many. Too many. They are they 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 just are amazing. And you know they're continually you know this like you know OS four would have been done ten years ago. And they were working on. Um, no, the, the thing about it, it was just, it was just a happy coincidence. So, I have actually all that, all that stuff I painted for, uh, for Ubuntu Mate for Alice. I, I've actually ported it over to the, to the uh, Linux on uh, X5000. So, uh, and, and I put that on the SD card, which I gave to Trevor. It's, it's a, for the 5020 X5000, and he put it in the tape bar, and it didn't work. <laughs> Go figure. Um, well, but anyway, so it was, it, it was, yeah, it was for the power PC. I mean, it was a mistake. It, was a mistake. Oh. <laughs> it needs to be updated anyway. It's six months old, and that's, that's like 45 <laughs> versions ago. Um, anyway. Also, 4K does work in many ways. 
Does it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then 4K. Alice can support 4K. <laughs> Um, I just, Probably the next one. Go tell Alex. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't show Alex. <laughs> uh -oh. You're willing to pay for it. <laughs> this is this is Alex's philosophy, and uh, and I'm sure it's going to be it's going to be awesome. Um, so it does. I've never tried that. So it's like I can imagine it's probably a little hard on the system. You know. It's you have to have a good video card. But yeah. If you have a dedicated video card, it should be no problem. Okay. So not not the the else I like. The, the one I like is a nice yeah, it's conservative. And uh, any other questions? Now everybody knows how else is built. It's like there's no custom code in there. There's no there's not it's not Linux running Amiga binaries. It's not any kind of because uh, I've seen all kinds of stuff. It's just Linux booting. It's exactly what I've been saying for two years. It's Linux booting or with Wine booting WinUAE booting the emulation and it's fast. It works just as fast as if it was on Windows. I, I guarantee you, you will not be able to tell it. Very, it might be faster because you know there's less there's less load underneath it, but it works it works really well. So if you can't stand the idea of running a Windows version of the emulator, switch it over to FSUAE and wait for him to upgrade it so that it can do the, the higher rest. I have a question. Ooh. Yes, so, sir. So. Okay, you kind of alluded to it. What what, what um, changes occurred in UAE? Oh, UAE. Yeah, yeah, of course. If you're not following that, um, he he's, he's a machine too. He, I think he was one of the Linux guys. Tony, yeah. <laughs> Tony, yeah. Tony Wyland. Uh, Willen Wyland. I, I said Wyland. Um, he continues to update that thing. It is just getting it's getting amazing. Even though he continually he says he's not interested. It just, it's, it's not interesting to him, but obviously it's interesting to him. But um, he implemented. We were initially we were limited to Picasso, you know, emulating a Picasso, you know, uh, obtaining the, the, the ROMs. Trevor had actually obtained the ROMs for us, and now we don't even so, uh, license for the ROMs, but we don't whatever. Um, he eliminated that, so now we use the native uh, uh, UAE graphics card, and so you know it, it's. Can do 4K. It can do, you know, it's it's faster because it's native. It's not this. It's not, you know, the, the graphics memory is not limited. I, I I'm guessing it has a 256 meg limit because of the, you know, the, the confines of the Amiga operating system. It works great. So if you've got great fast graphics, you've got uh, I think it's 768 megs or 800 and something megs altogether of, of memory. You know, you've got plenty for a for a 68K classic system. And um, um, uh, what, uh, access, he, he added access to um, the native file system, which which is a big deal because it's like you know if, if you weren't if you weren't paying attention to the whole, the whole progress of the uh, when you, OS 4.1 on when UAE, you probably didn't realize how hard it was to get you know you know it was easy to get the system installed sort of, um, but it was hard to get things over to use your FTP. It, or you email it yourself, or you, uh, whatever. It's just you know, there's everyone has their own little tricks for getting software over there. But now you can just mount a, a folder on the, the you know, Windows side or the Linux side. You just copy files to that and drag it to your to your um, to your system. It's it's much easier. Those are the main things. And then he continually continues to add things that aren't really important to me. But you know, he's trying to create this perfect. 68k installation or um, emulation. So he's added uh, um, support for the, uh, the Commodore PC emulation cards. I forget what they were. Bridgeboard cards. Yeah. I mean, yeah. He he just continues. It's just it's just amazing. If you're really interested in 68k, um, it's it, it's amazing. You know and, uh, the, the, what he's doing. You know, it's like and we're just using this one little bit of it. And so those changes were all because of your input? No, no, not at all. This is so I, I, I want to make sure. My question was, uh, what, 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 what things had in it, what things well, on that Alice project were uh, affected it, UAE? It did. Okay. We, we donated an Alice laptop to him early on. That is yeah. true. He's technically part so of the So we should thank you for he got driving change in UAE. Possibly. I, 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 have a hard, I, I'm not, I have a hard time imagining that, given that I, I watched his progress and it seems natural to me. I don't know. 
maybe Trevor passed him a million dollars on the day. Because he does that, you know, he does. Matthew's called Matthew's called So what are we not getting on FS UAE that you get on Wednesday? All these changes in the last year. And my understanding is but that... I mean, the, the file system mounting stuff I can do much easier on. If oh, I yeah. don't use Linux, I use a Mac, and it's, it's much smoother than Windows. Oh, yeah. Well, that's, and that's fine. You know, it's like, uh, uh, interestingly enough, as an aside, my own personal Alice machine also boots Mac OS High Sierra because, you know, that's what I do. And, uh, um, you know, so the, the Alice machine's a great Hackintosh machine if you're, if you're into that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, FSUAE will, will eventually catch up. And that's it's, it's in there. Then I've got the repository, so you can update to the latest version as soon as he, he in, you know, you know brings <coughs> the changes that Tony wrote into uh, FSUAE. You can switch you to FSUAE. That pretty regularly. It's just, there is some time lag. Like yeah, and it's this time it's been a really long lag. Like it's, it's like a couple of years behind or something. But, uh, and it, 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 there was just a recent update, but it's not he's not updating the things that, that, you know, that do that. Um, I don't mean to insinuate that he's not, you know, that he's, Taking two years to update, he's just doing different things. You know, like what's more important. And uh, uh, but yeah, it's still there and it's installed. If you want to, if you want to run it with sort of um, the current iteration of FSUAE, it works great. You know, it's it's not uh, it's not uh, HD, so it's going to be in uh, 13. I, th I think I, I settled on 1280 by 720 because then you can have the 32-bit cursors. You know, and, and which work you know nicely in some circumstances. Uh, mainly for me for SketchBlock because SketchBlock is Kind of interesting to me, and it, uh, and it doesn't it needs those thirty-two bit cursors to actually uh, be, uh, be able to use. Yes, sir. So do you do you think you could assemble all this, bundle it up into a Docker image, and run it on a remote cloud instance, and beam just the display into your device? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Just to clarify, I mean that would really be eating your own dog food, right? For all the whole visualization of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm good with it. You know, honestly, you know, if you, if you want, if maybe that can be part of FreeBSD. You know, is, is an emulation, you know, so you can access all your your your. It's the way to scale it out to lots of yeah, like that. Yeah, exactly. Completely over my head, and it's beyond painting. So it's like, <laughs> <laughs> but your painting would be appreciated. It would be appreciated, but uh, yeah. heavily used. And I guess, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's already you know used. It's like um, nobody just remembers because it's been ten years since I did anything. Uh, but uh, yeah, whatever. I mean, it's like this is this is just sort of an idea. You know, Alice is really. It's just it's it's something Trevor wanted and I wanted, and so it's it's really. It doesn't matter if anybody buys it, really. You know, Alex probably disagrees, but um, it really doesn't matter if anybody buys it because it's for me. You know, it's like, and, you know, I will continue to develop it. Yes, sir. Uh, your theming elements on Mate. Um, are you are you able to ignoring Alice for a moment, ignoring Rabbit Hole, ignoring the, just if someone wants the nice OS4 theming elements that you built, all the window theming, all of those, are you releasing that in any way? Release it. I don't know. Just, just for me. Or, it's, or it's not really on my radar because it's more. It's just trouble. I don't mind. You know, it's like I generally don't charge for anything, as these guys know. <laughs> Hard to get me. Um, I, it's a weird philosophy. Yeah. There are yeah. a lot of people I think who just I mean I've tried I, every I, every yeah the, and, this, and I look there's actually some 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 attempts to do it you know if you go to no yeah. up, you know there's some attempts that. And one of them isn't too bad, but yeah. um, um, I had the advantage, though, as I've been doing it on other systems for a long time. And so I created my version. My version isn't exactly the same because I, I first of all, I created it from screenshots because I never had OS 4 at that point. So, And I would take look at these screenshots and I'd zoom in them and I'd go, well, I don't like that. I can do better than that. And so I would like modify them a little bit. And so they are they're look alike, but they're not the same. You know, And plus, you, you can't steal somebody's. Actual, this is all. You know, it's like I can't cl I can't claim copyright or anything. You know, it's somebody else will work. So, and I, I don't know. It, it's it's really up to Trevor. You know, it's like I kind of like just leave it on Alice for now. But you know, you buy Alice and spread it out, or or you could buy Alice and turn off the emulation thing, and then you got Ubuntu. You know, skin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like, it's, it's, I don't I really like the skin. Yeah, it, it looks it, it looks good, and 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 uh, if you if you want to see. See the vast majority of the skin. 
uh, go to SourceForge and download any song because that's my Linux distribution and it's, it's all there. As a matter of fact, I have more skins in there. I have a, a Morphish skin, which is my re reinterpretation of MorphOS's look. Um, and uh, just like with OS4, mine is slightly better. But uh, it's, it's, I have a certain style. You know, Mason has his style, I have my style. I mean, I'm, I like crisper, cleaner, less blurry thing. I mean, you know, because there was a time when I could see really well and it was important to me. And now I, I see the appreciation of the whole stuff. So, um, so yeah, it's like the go get go 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 puppy Linux. The problem with puppy Linux is like the number of two stuff is limited, and um, there's a lot of stuff that I had to recreate for Ubuntu, and I think that's probably what people would want is the Ubuntu stuff. Um, it's a, but you'd have to you'd have to almost run it on main because it's it's so GTK two you know, dependent. Um, it has some, some GTK3 elements in it because I had to, but it's uh, I mean, it, it, But you have to run an old version of me. Because <coughs> most, of, most of the utilities now that are included with the versions of me, they don't, they, you can't compile it against GTK2. No, it's, it's still, it's, it's not GTK2, it's, it's make, which is supposed to be GTK2 compatible. Yeah, but a lot of the things like the, the, the text editor, the calculator, all that now, you can't build it against GTK2. You have to build it with GTK2. But most of the elements are GTK2 in the, in the OS. Because trust me, it's like I, it stands out like a sore th thumb when you know when I see. Yeah, the replacement for Nautilus is, is still GTK2. Yeah, GTK2. GTK2. <laughs> so the so the file does are still. Yeah, it right. does. But a lot of the. But yeah, you look at the other stuff, and it, and you know, and what I what I've done is I haven't tried to. GTK2 is all like script based. It's not images anymore, and you know it's probably yes, yeah, so it's it's a coder's idea of how to skin something. But, um, and I'm sure it's great, but it's like, it's, it's over my head. And so what I did was I, I took uh, uh, one of the other themes in there and I just, I just uh, uh, swiped the, the elements that were, there. it's very close looking, you know, like for the where it's a blue theme and it's like, it's for a little, little small, you know, but it's just getting worse, you know, and eventually it'll all be, um, and I'll have to learn, I'll have to learn GTK3, especially since uh, Ubuntu has now abandoned um, uh, you know, a, uh, what do they call it? Uh, Unity. Unity in favor of, uh, of GTK or GNOME again. So maybe most of us aren't crying about that. Yeah, it was nuts. It was it was not intended for desktops. It was it was Microsoft's idea for Windows 8. You know, mm -hmm. and, uh, um, but so you know maybe if I get bored again, I'll try to figure it out how to do it, um, uh, or somebody you know smarter than me will figure it out. And combine it with the elements that I did create. You'll want to learn CSS. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, that's what I want to do. What I've, what, I've, what I've really been tempted to do for several years is to create a full Linux icon set in, in the Amiga style. Because it's like somebody out there has actually kind of done, they've taken my, uh, my dual ping icons and taken up the, the main image and created a, a Linux set, but it's, it's a little rough. You know, it's it's an interesting idea, but uh, I'm, temp I'm tempted. But I have I've created so many alternate styles. It would not be the old style. It'd be something derivative or similar, but it wouldn't be the old style. As a matter of fact, I created a, a, a new set for Amy Kit for, specifically for Alice. It ended up out a little early because Jan was not as patient, um, which is big deal. He was not as patient, so he released Amy Kit X, which was specifically designed for Alice, and it says it on the page. But a lot of the elements in Amy Kid X were designed specifically for Alice. You know, I got talked into painting a new icon set, and so I, there's a new design. And you know, I don't know if I get bored, I might, I might flesh that out and do a, a full icon set. But it, it, you know, you're talking a thousand hours of, of time. I have to ask you, you had the most gorgeous set of OS icons. I don't know if that's available. But, I was giving it out to the people. I've let people yeah, but you, it wasn't publicly available. Probably not. And I don't remember if the issue was because it was some some of the stuff had to be based on sort of Mason's base drawers or whatever. Oh was. yeah, I, I paint a lot of Mason icons. But it was so gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, it's like I paint a lot of Mason icons, but I don't release them because they're you know it's Ma Mason's design and you know it's like and uh, um, I, I, they're better. They're not better. Yes, they are, and I really, 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 really <laughs> love it. No, the, the reality <laughs> is, the the OS4 icons have, have they're amazing now, especially especially these larger ones. The detail, and 
They're, they're probably a little too subtle for some people's tastes, but you know, it's like they are really, really, really painted and they're very unique. You know, they don't look like anything else. That's and, true. I'm just but, but and, the one uh, you can revert. All I was doing was just taking he, you know, he has published uh, a style guide, you know, just like Apple does. And it has the color palettes and, and that's the mistake that I mean, we have we have some people that are like tireless in creating OS4 icon set. But I don't know if any of them have noticed that there is a color palette that Mason files and or follows. And if you don't use his color palette palette, they look odd. It's not they don't look bad, but they look odd. And uh, so, um, you know, it's like, that, you know. Fair I'm, enough, but, that, but I think what I'm hearing is you're not going to release those items. Probably not. Probably not. Oh, all right. I probably would give them to anybody that, that asked for them, but, uh, um, but I, I, I don't know. I, don't know. I also did a, a complete reskin of Morpho OS because Morpho OS is, 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 is fairly awesome, and they were on laptops. I was going to say before, uh, before OS 4, but. Whatever, <laughs> they're not, since OS4 is not on laptops, other than the virtual sense. Um, so I, I bought a Mac, uh, uh, a PowerBook, not a MacBook, PowerBook, but I like OS4, so I replaced all the icons. And most of, you know, there's more, there's equivalents for most of them, but there's like 40 or 50 of them that there are, there's no uh, replacement. So I created a full set of Morph OS, OS4 icons, and I painted the theme, which, is out there, you can download it. It's like I um, inadvertently left it in my FTP uh, uh, site uh, for too long. I, I think I'd uploaded it and forgotten it, or, or maybe I uploaded it to give to somebody and forgot it and stuff, and now it's on some site. And, uh, I grabbed it. Yeah, everybody's got it. You know, it's like, but it, it was never actually released, it was just swiped off. You know, the movie theme that you created for that, I actually have on one of my OS4 boxes. I, act, I created the uh, the version five uh, uh, movie theme for four too. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So uh, so it should be very similar. It is very similar. Yeah. Uh -huh. So yeah, I did that too. So it's like, but all I was doing was just creating uh, something that I felt looked more OS four. The idea is you want it to look as 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 similar to the uh, reaction. So I take it back. There is, I, w I was thinking there wasn't anything uh, in OS four that that I had ever done that actually made it onto into to the release. And you are. I did the gadgets for that stuff. So it's very, very minor, but but uh, and I just did it to look like uh, Mason stuff. So uh, go figure. So it's actually fun painting in somebody else's style. Oh. Yeah. So, any, is that it? So now you know way more about icons. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. I think we could probably tag that as imagination personified. <laughs> uh, and uh, just uh, thank you, Ken, for, for doing all that for us. You're welcome. Uh, and thank you, Alex, wherever you are, uh, for carrying that forward, that whole project forward and making it available to us. Uh, a couple of housekeeping things. There's leftover food. There's to-go boxes to take it. Please do. Uh, there's more cake left. Please do it. Uh, and I think there's more coffee. <laughs> Uh, you can uh, drink that up as well. Uh, thanks for, for coming. And you got a word for us? Yeah, a small amount of screen. OK, go ahead. OK. Uh, uh, I wrote this up so I could stay on track. Of it, but I don't think I'm going to read it because I, I can't go through it. Uh, 6 o'clock uh, Thursday morning uh, before the show, I was notified that a dear friend of mine died. And by a, a insult injury thing, I will not be able to catch a flight back for his funeral. So, and he's a, he was a mega guy in the day, and he was always a programmer uh, wanting to do everything. I was always picking my brain about different things. So, in tribute to him, I'm releasing the SDK browser source code uh, as an example for this job. So that's basically how it's done. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, especially to our first time attenders. Uh, and uh, just wanted to, uh, you know, just honor the uh, 
the uh, presence of uh, Paul Lassa, who was the uh, 84000 team project manager for Commodore. I designed that whole project and uh, part of the, was the team leader uh, for the production of that machine. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, it's really uh, great to have you here. And also Kevin Wong came clear from Calgary just to be here. Uh, and along with, not along with Steve, but from the same deck of the woods. And uh, thank you for coming here as well. As well as all of our first timers, Mark Reather. Uh, and let's see here, all the first timers as well. That's uh, about it. So thank you all for coming. And uh, we usually have it after this gathering. Uh, it's down there. But down there may still be occupied by the doll. It's great. Uh, is it empty? Yes. Ah, we can go down there. All right. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>